this morning. I appreciate the Word of God, don't you? Amen. And thank God for these verses, these words that he's left us. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Acts chapter number 8 is where we'll be reading this morning. I'd like for you to stand with me, if you would, in reverence to the Word of God. Brother Law, since Brian's not here to aggravate you, how many times does this make 29, brother? Amen. Amen. I appreciate Brother Law. He, he's always dressed up nice and always got a good spirit. I appreciate that. Verse number 26 in Acts chapter number 28, or excuse me, Acts chapter 8, verse number 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man, just one man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the char charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, and he read Esaias, or that would be Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias, Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, we would say, please tell me, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and he began at the same scripture, and he preached unto him. What's that word? Everybody in the world needs Jesus. God said he chose by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And as they went on their way, they came unto certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Now I want to ask you a question before you sit down. Where was he going? Where was the eunuch going? He had been to Jerusalem, right, for to worship. He said, well, what's a lost man wanting to worship for he's just doing like we was doing all we knew how the best we knew how you know where he's going he's going home when I stepped out of the pulpit last Sunday I said why didn't I think of that and God let me know this week why I didn't think of that last Sunday I thought about this thought wonder what he told the queen 
when he got home. I'm going to preach this morning for a little while on a message fit for a queen. You can be seated. Our Father, I want to thank you this morning for the privilege to bow our heads and our hearts. Lord, I've been under a burden now for some time. I pray, dear Father, you'd help us. Help us to see someone get the help that the unit got in the desert. Help us, Lord, to see someone come to the end of their self and come to the Savior. I pray, dear Father, that we that know you, Lord, would would pray this morning and that we would be in a spirit, Lord, of prayer and worship. Lord, thank you for coming by. Thank you for that Sunday school teacher, Lord, Brother Harry Mitchell. I thought he was a giant when I was a kid. Thank you for that scripture that he memorized and for the lessons that he taught us boys. Thank you, Lord for the van driver or the bus drivers, Lord, in my life that came and picked me up as a young'un, took me to the house of God so I could hear about this man called Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, even though I lived in my pride for those teen years and those early adult years, thank you, Lord, that at age 27, you brought me to a place where I realized, Lord, that religion wasn't going to get it done. I needed Jesus. I needed to be forgiven. I needed a relationship that it could only come through a new birth. I pray, dear Father, today that you would speak to hearts. Help us, our Lord, today. That measure of pride, whatever it is, help us to set it aside. Help us to humble our hearts. Help us, our Lord, to understand how bad we need you in these days. Lord, this world's a rocking and a reel, and it's turned upside down and inside out. It ain't going to be long, Lord. The choir sang the song, and it's the truth of the scripture. The king is coming. I pray, Lord, that you'll help us. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said, Amen. Have you ever sat down at someone's table? And I know that I've said this. Of course, I married the best cook in the world. But have you ever sat down at someone's table and said, wow, that was a meal fit for a king? Have you ever heard something like that or, or heard somebody say that or said it yourself? Well, the Lord began to deal with my heart and I want to th think along the lines. Now, I won't be dogmatic where the Bible's not dogmatic. But Brother Junior, God has a plan in everything that he does. Brother Junior stood last week and shared with us, if you recall, how that Billy Graham went over to England years ago and held a, a crusade. And the, the queen heard the message and then the queen sent for brother Graham and invited him to her house and I want to think and you say now pastor what do you mean you want to think well because I don't know for sure but I'll, I'll, I'll let me just give you some things that's on my heart when Philip got there the eunuch already had the word of God in his hand can I give you this Somebody offered it to him. Amen. Yeah. Do you have a gospel track in your pocket? Have you offered the word of God to somebody this week? Help me. Absolutely. Let me give you something else. Not only, beloved, did somebody offer the eunuch the word of God, but the, the eunuch was willing to receive it. If you give out enough gospel tracts, 
there'll be somebody that'll tell you they don't want it. It hadn't been too long ago till a young man standing in a driveway said, no, I don't want it. I said, listen, I wrote this in honor of my dad. I said, surely you could find time to read it. And he reluctantly took it. I hope he'll read it. But not everybody will even receive the word of God. I'll tell you one thing. You go to a place like Mexico, you can ride down the street and throw gospel tracks out the window of a 15-passenger van. Brother Don, they won't even hardly hit the sidewalk, and some of them don't until they're gobbled up. Amen. Seems like in America we've gotten gospel hardened. We're too good for the Word of God. But this eunuch was not too good for the Word of God. He, somebody offered him the Word of God, and somebody, beloved, knew that this man was looking for something that he didn't have, amen? He had come to Jerusalem to worship. You remember what Jesus told the woman at the well? He said, you worship you know not of. We're the Jews. We worship. We worship God. Now watch this. I believe with all of my heart, if you think about the text, that this man was not ashamed to receive the word of God, the eunuch. Secondly, he was not ashamed to admit that he didn't understand what he was reading. Am I right or am I wrong? Amen. And watch this. He was not ashamed to ask for help. He said, Philip, I need some help. Who's this man talking about? This, this man, Esaias or Isaiah. Is he talking about himself or is he talking about some other man? He was not ashamed to ask for help. They were riding down through there and, and he said, see, here's water. He said, what doth hinder me to be baptized? He was not ashamed to ask what hindered him from being baptized. He was not ashamed to receive the message from Philip about Christ. He was not ashamed to sit there and listen to Philip preach to him Isaiah 53 and the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was not ashamed, beloved, to hear the message of the gospel. Amen. You say, Pastor, I don't know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to set you up to understand that it's hard for me to believe that in all of those areas, he would have been not ashamed and then got back to the castle with the queen and all of a sudden been ashamed of what happened out there in the desert. You know what I believe? I believe he went back and he sat down with the queen. Now he's a man of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. And I, I believe he might have started his conversation something like this. Have I got a story to tell? Can I tell you something, beloved? If you've ever been to Calvary and you've ever been saved by the grace of God, you've got a story to tell. Amen. There was a place somewhere in your life, beloved, where you met Jesus in faith Amen. and you have a story to tell. You say, Pastor, I just don't believe many people wants to hear it. Well, here's what I believe. You're still here, so there must be one somewhere that wants to hear it. There must be one somewhere. God has chosen to lead Philip from the revival meeting going on in Samaria out into a desert going after one man, a man that's a successful man, a man that's a seeking man, a searching man. He's searching for something. Can I say this? Without Christ, every one of us was searching for something. We may not have known what we were searching for. And we may not have known where we were searching for it. It's Saturday. Last night was race night. Many are searching in the bottom of a bottle. 
Many are searching in a needle, a syringe. Many are searching, a uh, beloved, in the houses of ill repute scattered out all over the land. Many are searching in the pornography on the internet. Many are searching, beloved, in relationships uh, that are not scriptural. But I'm telling you, beloved, listen, God uh, has put a void in every man, every woman's heart uh, that only Christ can fill. Amen. Amen. Here's this man the eunuch I believe he he says you know what I believe he says something to the queen like this I left Jerusalem and I was just as empty as I was when I showed up he was getting honest you know what I, I was a church member for six and a half years and I'd come empty and leave empty and come empty and leave empty and come empty and leave empty and come empty and leave empty just as empty oh I tried I wanted to be a Sunday school teacher maybe that'll fill that emptiness I wanted to drive a van maybe that'll fill that emptiness I wanted to help the preacher maybe that'll fill that emptiness three and a half years into it God must want me to preach maybe that'll fill that emptiness I'm going to tell you something only Jesus will fill the emptiness it's in your heart and in your life I believe he told the queen for the first time in my life I was honest I was honest for the first time in my life I got my eyes off of my position and my prestige and my pride and I realized something was missing on the inside. Amen. Amen. And you know, yeah. I'm not going to be dogmatic about this, but I will be dogmatic about this, what I'm about to say. It's my prayer, Brother Don, that when I get to heaven, the queen's right there. I hope he shared that message in such a way that that queen looked at him and said, you know what, I'm him too. You know what? It's about time, even though I'm the queen. It's about time uh, that I humbled my heart. It's about time. Tell me about this man named Jesus. Tell me about this man Isaiah wrote about. Tell me about his suffering. And I believe, I want to believe that the, I do believe in my heart that he told her what she did with it. We don't know for sure. You'll not make me believe that that man got home and was all of a sudden ashamed. And if he was the treasurer, he had to travel. And I believe he told it everywhere he went. You say, Pastor, how come many people never tell anything? I'll tell you why. This is real deep, so get a hold of it. Because they ain't got nothing to tell. If you've ever been to Calvary, if you've ever known the joy of sins being forgiven, if you've ever known what it is to come to a place where your pride wasn't worth it anymore, you didn't care what people thought, I just want to be saved. I just want to be forgiven. I just want out from under this mess that I've made out of my life. If you've ever come to that place, and Jesus moved in. Oh, it's a happy place. Amen. Brother Michael, I get to thinking about that. And I almost wish I could be lost again so I could be saved again. Because yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. It's the best thing that ever happened to me in this world. Amen. Was when the Lord took that load of sin. This eunuch, he's humbled his heart, but he also found some help. I, I think he would tell the queen, it involved me being honest. It involved me being humble. But it also involved someone helping me. Now, let me give you this. The eunuch, Sister Tanita, he knew nothing of the Holy Ghost. But you see, the Holy Ghost could easily be overlooked in this text. He's the one that sent Philip out into the desert. 
He's the ultimate beloved. Listen, the paraclete, the one called alongside to help. He's the one that helped Philip to know there's a great meeting going on here, but I'm telling you there's one out yonder and I've got my eyes on him. I, I love him. And he needs to understand that that scripture is not talking about Isaiah. It's talking about the Savior, the Lord Jesus. And so he finds help because of the Spirit. He finds help because somebody loved him enough to give him the scripture. Say amen. amen. Somebody loved him enough to give him the scripture. Amen. Maybe he got it in Jerusalem. Maybe somebody in Jerusalem handed him a copy of Isaiah. I don't know what it looked like back then. I really don't. I don't know if it looked like a book, if it was a scroll. I don't know how they, they but I do know it was the word of the living God. And that the word of God changes lives. And he sees another helper now. He's helped by the spirit, though he doesn't realize it. He's helped by the scripture. But now he's helped by the soul winner. Here comes Philip. You know, listen to me carefully. I'm not being critical. I mean this. I've had people say to me, I want to be real careful because I'm afraid I'd say the wrong thing. How many's ever heard something like that? Amen. Honey, let me tell you something. If you're pointing them to Jesus, it's impossible to say the wrong thing. Right. If it's about you and it's about the church and it's about everything under the sun, it is the wrong thing. But if you're pointing people to Jesus, that's the right message. That's the message that's fit for a queen. Here he is. He's telling the queen the story. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Can you believe that God loved me enough to take a man out of the city, out of that great meeting? and send him all the way out there in the desert where I was. Can you believe God loved me enough? Let me tell you what Jesus did for you and I, Miss Queen. Let me tell you what he did. Let me tell you how that he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded, Miss Queen, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and listen with his stripes you and I can be healed he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before her shears is dumb so he openeth not his mouth he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation I believe he got right down to this right here I believe he said, Miss Queen, it was in his humiliation. He was willing to be beaten, stripped, crowned with thorns, spit on, bruised, blindfolded and bruised. He was willing to be scourged. He was willing to be nailed to a cross. You want to know why, Miss Queen? Because he loves you and he loves me. And he knew that was the only way that a holy God could receive unholy people is because they would be deemed righteous through the blood that he shed. On, I'm telling you, that's a message fit for a queen. And I believe, Brother Don, in my heart, he shared that message. He was probably one of the few that would have that liberty to sit down with the queen. She may, have, she may have started the conversation like this. Well, tell me about your journey. Tell me about the treasure. He was in charge of. He may have said something like this. Honey, I found something in the desert that's worth more than all the treasure in the world. The songwriter said, I found a treasure when I found Jesus. Amen. We know that he found us. But I know this. 
we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency, the power may be of God and not of us. It involved someone that was humble, someone that was helpful, someone that was honest, someone that was humiliated. And then the last thing I want to give you, it involved someone that was honored. You say, <coughs> this ain't going to take just a minute. Here's what went through my mind. He's talking to the queen. And, and you know, if you learn a little bit about talking to people, it's always good, Brother Grizzle, to build them up a little bit. That's not hypocritical. If you've got to deal with something, deal with the positive first. If you're dealing with your children or, or grandchildren or dealing with anything, deal with the positive first. If you'll notice that in the churches, in the Revelation, Jesus would deal with what they were doing right, and then he would drop the hammer on what they were doing wrong. I believe he might have said something like this, Brother David. Miss Queen, I just want you to know it's an honor to work for you. <laughs> I believe he might have said it is an absolute honor to be treasurer for you, Miss Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. But before we go today, I want to tell you something that's a greater honor than being treasurer for the queen. And she might have said, well, tell me, Mr. Eunuch, what could be a greater honor than being treasurer for the queen? And I believe he might have said something like this, to be a child of the king. Amen. Yeah. To be a child of the king. Brother Wayne... The greatest honor that we could ever have in this world is to be identified yeah. as a child of the king. Amen. A child of the king. Amen. God has sent this message today because he wants you to know he will honor you with his salvation but remember what the scripture said, before honor is humility. Before we can be honored with God's salvation, we have to humble our hearts in sin. You've heard throughout your life, no doubt, people say things like, come and give your heart to Jesus. Let me say this to you, say it reverently and respectfully. When we get saved, we have nothing to give. I believe the songwriter got it right, Sister Danita, when he said, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. We have nothing to give him, but he has everything, Brother Eric, to give us. He will honor us with his salvation if we will but humble ourselves and admit, you say, preacher, that just sounds too good to be true. It probably did to the queen too. But we got to hope, Brother Michael, that somewhere along the way she understood. I believe, Brother Don, another thought just come to my mind as he came in and came out and came in and came out, you know, the way he normally did. She probably saw something in his life that she didn't see before. There was a spring in his step. There was a smile on his face. There was joy in his heart. There was a song on his lips. And the next time he goes to Jerusalem, it's going to be a different journey. He's taking the Lord with him. Because when you get saved, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Get us a song, Brother Ralph, Sister Marie. If somebody would be obedient this morning, you came in with a heavy burden, and you'll leave it right here. You'll go out knowing that you're a child of the king. You'll go out knowing that that, that load of sin is gone, that you've been forgiven, 
and that Christ is now your Savior. He hung in open shame and humiliation naked. And it is humiliating for us to stand and say, I'm a sinner. I need Jesus. I know. I remember it well. Pride don't go down easy. But I tell you when it does, oh, happy day. If you could just confess, there's never been a change in my life. I need Jesus. Honey, he'll save you. He'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for the privilege. The heaven-bought privilege, Lord, to preach the word of God. God, you know the burden that's been in our heart. Lord, that's nothing compared to the burden that's in your heart. God, I pray this morning, Lord, for that young lady. I pray for that young man. Lord, it could be somebody that's professed to know Christ for years and years. And yet down inside, they're just as empty as that eunuch was. I pray, Lord, this morning that somebody... Philip, he ran to that chariot. I, I pray someone would run to Jesus. Someone would just say, it's enough. I want to be forgiven. I want to know when I lay down at night, if I never wake up again, heaven will be my home. Help us, Lord, this morning, to be honest. Lord, you've sent help this morning. I know the Spirit of God's here helping people. I pray, God, you'd help them. Continue to help them in this invitation. I'm asking this morning, if you will, while we sing.